guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for another video. And today I'm super excited because I've interviewed both of these gentlemen on this uh, on this channel and they are incredible personal heroes of mine, both of them, both brilliant. Probably the number one father and son team in Magic. Sorry, Peter and Harry, it's just a fact. <laughs> I am of course talking about the organizers of the London Magic Convention, the one and only Andy Nyman. And Preston Nyman, how are you doing, guys? Hey, good. Nice to see you. Nice how are you? you? I'm great. I'm excited because as of time of recording, it's just under two months before the London Magic Convention comes about. Oh, my God. <laughs> I <actually laughs> <didn't realize that. laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 6th of November is the convention. Yeah, God, that's less than two wow. months away now. Less than two months away now. That makes it seem like we're really panicked about it. We're not. It's shaping up really nicely. But yeah. just generally the thought of it, 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 it's it gone from being like, oh, and next year there'll be another convention to like, oh, two months away. Well, also, convention. it's not like that thing where it's a big company creating their convention with their team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he wakes up to 11 texts a morning <laughs> saying, oh, Christ, we need to do that. What about this? I'm going to do this today. Can we chase that? I tend to send one reply. I'll get so, 11 texts. We need to do this, 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 and this. And I'll tend to send like, OK. <laughs> yes. Yes. The reply it's, is it's generally like one. a yes. link to something funny you found on Twitter. And I'd but, be like, no, great, no. what about that? But I'm replying to send you the link, and then I'll see the other text and have to reply, yes, fine, if oh, I'm sending you the link. But it is literally. It is literally two, yeah. We go, when we finish this interview, we're off up to the Lyric Hammersmith, um, probably to shoot a little video to put online, um, just of how just how, how good the toilet facilities are there. Um, Very and, <laughs> Very but important. then also, you know, just to do a bit of measuring up and planning and just talk about the amazing day on Sunday, November the 6th. Well, I want to talk about it. And and honestly, guys, you have uh, a lot to live up to because a lot of people that I spoke to said that the, the first London Magic Convention was one of the favourite conventions they've ever been to. And I think part of the reason for that is I think you guys were the first convention in the UK that came back after COVID. And you yeah. kind of made that stand and you were like, you know what? We're going to do this. And it was so wonderful to, after being in a situation where you couldn't even leave your house for the best part of a year or so, we were now seeing old friends and talking at the bar. And, and it was so respectful the way that you managed to put it all together and yet kept everyone safe. Because at the time, um, you know, obviously there were still restrictions in place. And yeah. it was a and, massive and, event. Yeah. And it was incredible. I mean, that you put all of that together. And I, I mentioned Lloyd off camera just before, me and Lloyd both said on the podcast afterwards that was incredible i mean it was absolutely incredible and you got a lot to live up to because it was so well received it really I was think part of it last year was about was as, as a um reaction to covid and we both we both definitely for years have missed the international convention in november so we'd always thought about it but covid really was like there are no conventions and we want to do something nice and get people in a room or whatever so let's do it but part of it i suppose was not in a bad way, but naivety, because it wasn't an event that existed pre-COVID. I think maybe if it existed pre-COVID, we'd have weighed up the risks a bit more and gone mm. financially, is it viable or, or can we actually do a... But because we'd never done it before and just had the brain to do it because of being locked in the house, I think that it just came together really nicely because we didn't ever really stop to think about, is this the right idea? And having it as a... This year is not masked because the world's changed, but at the time because things were bumpy, it was very respectful and masked or whatever. It was so also a real reaction to, we, you know, we just, as do, I, n I have no doubt, every one of your watchers, we just adore magic. We, we're, we love it. We love the world of it. We're obsessed with it. We love how much of a laugh it is, the friends you make, the community mm. of it. And also our convention was a reaction to how toxic all the online stuff had become. At the circle, a lot of the face, I mean, I'm not on Facebook, but Preston would tell me often about the Facebook stuff that was kicking off. And it was just so ugly. And it just felt like, we just want to try and re not remind everybody, aren't we clever, but just reinvigorate the fact that it's just tricks. And it's, it's really such fun. fun and such a laugh to be together. And one of the things we'd always loved so much about Macmillan's was 
it just never felt corporate. It just felt like this is a family thing. And and that's that they really set the, the benchmark for us. So that's that was also a part of it. Mm, absolutely. And you know what? I think, yeah, talking about Macmillan's Ron's Day, I think that there's been a hole in 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 the magic calendar since they stopped doing it i know you've got the session in london but for me the session is a very completely different thing it works it's, yeah. it has its fan base but um th th this the, the london magic convention it feels very much like a love letter to uh macmillan's in many ways because i think you've taken elements of that added your own stuff as well and and i think it we needed something like this but I think that's a huge, that was also part of the conversations last year. And, but, but this year we're in a much bigger venue. So part of like upgrading the convention was also about having these conversations. The session, yeah, completely different thing. And it's, it's so polished and so, uh, it's such a great weekend. But there's no point trying to do what they do. Um, because yeah. they've got it down such a tea. Likewise, Blackpool, there's no point trying to replicate, uh, what what Blackpool do in terms of the scale and the atmosphere because it's, it's only ever going to be not as good as the session or not as good as Blackpool. So then it just forces you to try and do a different thing. And I think the thing that we really part of our worry maybe about upgrade like not upgrading but going into a bigger venue was will it have the same atmosphere? Last year was one room, the dealers, the lecture, everything was one room and it was so buzzy and so fun. And part of our thing was if we go into a bigger room and the dealers hall is separate to the lectures and it's a big theatre, it's a lovely Victorian theatre that we're in is uh will it kill the atmosphere mm. but well but we're the, leading with you know yeah. with, with such fun and such love and the, of magic that it... the honest to god truth is we don't know yet mm. We'd be lying if we said it's going to be as good at we don't know i mean the lecturers you know we've got brilliant we've got richard wiseman oh i'm gonna break these lecture. down in a minute yeah you've got yeah oh we'll let you do it and we've got two international lecturers so not only have we leapt in and expanded it's cost us a load of our own money <laughs> it's a big risk this year. but <laughs> also the venue may not work we may think oh it wasn't as good or but also it might just risk. be it is a risk, but that's part of the joy of it. But as, I look, think the wider I'm point, I'm just going to grab something that I want to show you all as well. Okay. Well, does the wider point? I think was as long as we're running it with a sense of like family and fun and just entertainment above anything else, um, and joy, then it kind of the the conversation we had was we could have booked the O2 or the Palladium or you know we could have booked the biggest venues you could find and it would still be a great fun day because that's all we care about is making it a nice fun day. So. So I think, um, you know, it's about differentiating yourself from the other conventions, I suppose. Oh, absolutely. And I don't, I've never spoken to you guys about this, so I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. This isn't a money-making scheme for you. I mean, you guys, you are very successful in your own fields. You don't need to be getting the stress of planning yeah. a magic convention to make money. Yeah. This for you is, you love magic. You love magic, and this is something... You know that 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 goes alongside that. I can yeah. tell. Things. I mean, yeah. I think it would be nice for it not to be a money losing scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is a conversation again that we've had about like merch. We had some merch last year, and we've got merch this year. Really cool merch. And I think part, maybe part of our resistance at first was: does it just feel like a cash grab? Does it just feel like you bought your ticket now by the mug and the pin and whatever? But the truth is we wanted merch because we know that if we went to the convention, we'd want to buy the mug, we'd oh, want to buy a pin 100%. badge. And we just want like, as long as the merch is not, you know. So I think that, yeah, there's no version of it where it is a money-making thing. You can just hope to make your money back at least. And but there's, but there are like, we're going to have a merch stand just because we love that sort of thing anyway. You know, it's nothing to do really with money. It's just about having a day that we're excited about. And if we can control that day then that's even better and that's also the way it's funny you know because in writing you know creating i'm not saying that creating a convention is creating art but when you create anything ultimately there are two sort of ways you can do it the first way is you can create something as a commercial venture so you can create a trick that you think i would never do this trick in a million years but i know there'll be lots of magicians who will buy this. Um, and the same with like, if you're making a film or writing a play or, you know, you can sort of write something, bite the numbers that you think, I don't there's love nothing it, wrong with. No, it's fine. 
But the other way you can do it is to just think, so like when we wrote, me and Jeremy wrote ghost stories, what is what would we want to see? What is the play we would be excited about seeing? And that's sort of what we've done with the convention. If we went to our convention, what would we think? Oh my God, I love that. So for instance, the four pound gala show, which was the biggest risk last year, is the, the is the purest yeah. version of why it's me and Preston. You weren't there for that last year. You'd left by that point, hadn't I you? I left. I've heard oh. all about it. Oh it my God. It was. Uh, but again, that was a real example. Sometimes, sometimes part of generating the convention also, sometimes with each other and sometimes with other people that we're sort of sharing ideas with, oh. about digging your heels in a little bit, I think, and just yeah. knowing when you like an idea. <laughs> so the Four Pound Gala Show, for you, for people that weren't there, whatever, anyone, we, we wanted to... And it's uh, the same this year. So exactly. listen up, because if you're coming, you can be in the garden. You can be in the, anyone. Okay. This is the most single, most bonkers idea that I've ever had, that you guys have ever, I've ever heard. And okay. it shouldn't work, but it's the thing that everybody was talking about. It after. was, and it really, up until seeing it work, I we didn't <laughs> think it would work. And now it did. It is as I said. It's a it's a Victorian theatre. It's a Frank Matcham theatre. It's six hundred and fifty seats in there. You are on stage at a proper theatre now. So anyone that has a ticket can enter the gala show with whatever you like. I mean, magic preferably, but you could do whatever you wanted. It um, your the only rule is your act has to come in between three minutes forty five and four minutes. If your act finishes with the sentence, this is a new edition. It has to end with the sentence. It has to end with the sentence. And that is the end of my act. Not, and that's the end of my act. And that is the end of my act. And then the timer stops. If you hit that 15 second window, you get a certificate and four pounds and you've won. If you go even a second under or a second over that 15 second window, you walk away empty handed. Now, the joy of it (laughs) is there is a timer running behind the performer they can't see it but the timer starts and then is just a red screen no time on it so you can't see the time even though the timer is running and in that 15 second window it turns green with a countdown on it which they can't see it is so brilliant Edge edge of your seat fun and funny it's honestly so if you are coming, all the details, the rules, including, and that is the end of my act, it's all on the website. The same with the close-up competition. Before we move to close-up, oh, yes, I yes. should say, just as a, a it's really not mean-spirited. The idea no. doesn't sound mean-spirited, but there's no booing. Like, it, it's it's so exciting and so positive and encouraging, the atmosphere, that even the people that lost last year, they were great sports, but also the audience are so on side. So don't be... Uh, worried that you'll be embarrassed there's no embarrassment at all it's just it's a fun like um party game sorry close up so so the close up as well um i'm just about to get this out so anybody who wants to join the close up competition um can if you bought a ticket for the day you are entitled to enter it doesn't cost anything else to enter your act has to be between 8 and 10 minutes uh you will be the winner will be crowned you're doing it on stage with cameras uh, the winner will be crowned London Close Up Champion, London Close Up Magic Champion. Uh, quite hard to see in this light. But hold on, let me put this in here. This is the Anthony Owen. That might. Whoop! Ooh. It was the Anthony <laughs> Owen trophy. You can't really see it that's too much. Right. But that's that. Craig, all I'm saying is it would look pretty nice on your um, on your shelf. That's all I'll say. Oh, maybe I need to come out of retirement. <laughs> yeah. There's one other award. This is uh, which I'm not going to show you who it's going to yet, which is, I mean, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway, is the truth with the reflections. But last year we gave out the Patrick Page Award uh, for Excellence in Magic. And last year's went to David Burglass. So this is this year's the Patrick Page Award for Excellence in Magic. The post-it note on there uh, is covering up the name. Yeah. Is covering up the name. This year, let me say it's going to Andy Nyman, but I didn't want it. No, this year <laughs> um, it's someone. You know, again, uh, it, that'll be announced on the day. It'll be a surprise on the day who that is going to. Um, 
but it's a very so glad that you've used Patrick's uh, page's name in that because oh. he was the biggest influence on my on my career. Uh, I really, I remember going to Blackpool as a kid uh, at, at eighteen, and and I I all I'd done up until that point was watching trick or take videos of Patrick. Oh. Hello, I'm Patrick Page. Welcome to Trick or Tip. Yes. Yeah. And and I saw his stand and I was so scared to go up to it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my hero. And I stood there for about an hour and I think he could tell. And he just shut his stand up in the middle of the day and just said, hey, I'm Patrick and took me for a coffee. Do you know what? That's I miss so him lovely. so much. I worked with him quite a lot um, on early days of the Darren TV show, Monkey Magic, quite a lot of the um, early objective programs um it, he was just so special yeah so i mean both him and ali obviously but i pat was easier to get to know as a person yeah. I think. also he you know he had a filthy sense of humor <laughs> uh, potty mouth uh, uh, just the most hilarious lovely man and just an absolute pragmatist with the most amazing encyclopedic knowledge problem solving magic mm. um and i mean god you know we talk at me and andrew o'connor talk about him so often a because we loved him so much but also we just miss him in the room when we're working on magic because you think oh god pat would just have a hundred ideas of how to do this now <laughs> using mm. things in this room and also tell you the way 30 people had done it 100 years ago yeah yeah, it really would. Yeah. So anyway, that's the but, Patrick page. So so you've had you've got so that's the Patrick page. So we've got the close up, and you've got competitors obviously that have already. Uh, last they year's have. Post, by the way, was brilliant. Edward did an amazing job. Obviously, went on to uh, represent England in FISM. Yeah. Um, and you had Jasper Cherry, Nigel, yes. Pinnum, and hopefully, if they're, they're actually, big question: Are we going to keep Rodney James Piper off stages this year? Well, <laughs> for, Rodney, <laughs> for some context, Rodney, I, I can say Rodney nearly died at last year's convention. Now, that's the only thing that slightly soured the day is that Rodney fell off, uh, Rodney James Piper fell off the stage. And for soured the day, Reed made the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. As, as soon as he, it was certain he was actually okay. It was, it was it, the funniest thing to happen at any convention ever in the entire history of magic. But, yeah, we, obviously the day was filmed, but we're very reluctant to... Um, it will be impossible not to make a joke about it, but there is also a level of terror like uh, that has followed me yeah. since then. So I think that, um, yeah, I think that Rodney's probably back. It, it was definitely a moment. It was definitely, <laughs> if he comes on stage, he'll have a safety harness and bungee cord. Yes, exactly. That's right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta yeah. keep him safe. But yeah, the yeah. close-up. So by the way, last year the fall off the stage was, uh, you know, five foot or whatever. It was a big fall. But this year, because it's a theatre, there's an orchestra pit in front of the stage. So if you fall, I mean, it's what is it? A, a we could hire. Foot drop. We might get a bouncy castle. <laughs> that, would work. that would work. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we had Rodney fall off the stage. But that aside, you know, you, so you're going to get. There are three lecturers, so we've got. Uh, Richard White. Let's talk about the lecturers, if that's okay, because last year you had some incredible lecturers. I mean, incredible. Uh, and such an eclectic mix as well. You had Mark Kirstein, you had... Uh, Power. Mike, yeah, Mike Power. Uh, you had some incredible... Chris lecturers. Power. Chris Power, sorry, of course. Yeah, and um, Guy Hollingworth. And Guy, and Guy Hollingworth, sorry. I mean, just what, what a lineup. Yeah. And uh, you did you have any... Um, uh, did you feel any pressure that, like, wow, last year's lineup was incredible? How am I going to even come close to topping that? Well, again, we, we sort of, it's great the fact that we work together because, you know, Preston brings a knowledge of a, a sort of younger <laughs> magician's aspect, um, which is really helpful. But again, we just sort of book people we would like to see. Mm. I think it's fair to say. That's true. We book people we'd like to see and people that are fun lecturers yes. and also, um, you know, something I think, so for example, about the, the differences between the conventions, if I'm going to the session, then I'm expecting to see quite uh, 
quite tricky stuff maybe you know a, a lot of um maybe slight heavy stuff or you know but that isn't necessarily where our interests lie I suppose as a convention and just personally so it's people uh, Matthew Beach for example this year that um it's sort of creative thinking, I yeah. suppose, would maybe be the brief. The trickiest thing I find is there's so many people that we want to lecture. And yeah. at the moment, it's a one-day event. So really, you've got time for three lectures, among other yeah. things. So what, what's tricky is whittling it down, yeah. I think. Yeah. There's so, lots of people that it's like, oh, next year or the year after we'll book them, or, you, you know. But this year, so we have Matthew Beach, who's, you know, fooled Penn and Teller three times or whatever. He's amazing. Unbelievable. His Penguin lectures are amazing. And, and it's a lot of magic that is, you know, it's doable. Is, it's you know, but he comes up with the craziest methods for stuff. Phenomenal. Like, phenomenal. unbelievable, crazy. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw Spread Wave. Oh. And I just questioned reality. I was like, that just, there's no possible, like, you know, like sometimes you see a trick and you think, well, I can kind of work out maybe so. Yeah. I just thought, uh, half of Matthew's stuff, when I watch it, I'm just like, I got nothing. Like, literally, I have nothing. Like, yeah, you can't, and very often I find also that the the methods as exciting as the trick too. Yes. So certainly with him and Chad, their penguin lectures, the trick you're like, I have no idea, and then the method will be something that's so yeah. um yes, you know, Chad's spaghetti thing. I think about all the time. Too. So that's Chad Long. Yes. Who again? So this is these are, and I hate to keep banging on about the fact it's come out of our pockets, but these are two <laughs> international lecturers, and that's the other thing. You suddenly look at in the in Ron's day. And think how, how how did how did you pay for all that? Because for us to bring two international acts over, fly them over, put them in a hotel, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. you suddenly realise, oh my god! So anyway, forget that. It's, it's true, yeah. Chad and Long so coming much, over. Just very quickly on Chad, we can't overlook Chad. I mean, as much as I love Matthew and I do, Chad is one of my favourite creators. Oh, um, really? As well as as well as being just super funny and super nice and i'm just totally in tune with his sense of humor he also uh, the stuff that he does is so commercial like and yeah. he's always ahead of the game he's always taking classics and improving them yeah. like when his flash thing came out with the uh with the, yes, uh, the flash drives it's like that's the best oh, yeah. influence on color changing knives i've ever seen yeah. and then the scratch thing which was incredible brilliant and, yeah you know he's awesome. just everything it's amazing just, he's good. doing so So he's lecturing but then also so uh what we did last year is we had the gala show and then had a mini sort of performance afterwards and which this was year, wayne dobson, which was wayne last, dobson year. last year chad is doing that so after the gala show he's doing is it 20 minutes half think, an hour yeah 20 minute show um after the gala show so not only will you see him lecture you'll also see him perform, yeah which is rare really rare in the uk i can't think of the last time that he was no over. so exciting yeah. yeah chad is not a name that comes over to the uk very often i mean that's no. That's great. Chad, Chad, for me, like I say, that's the most exciting name. I love all of them, but that's the most exciting name. I think yeah. that uh, his shuffling lesson is the best. Oh, my God, that's a brilliant, brilliant trick. Best self-working card trick ever created. And, and but, but the Boston routine with the, oh, that's, I, can keep, I can keep talking. He's just really good. He's so good. Yeah. Okay. And then we've also got Richard Wiseman, yeah. who, of course, is, you know, phenomenal. a phenomenal thinker, hilarious, yeah. brilliant, fooling, optical, psychological magic. So yep. that's right. And then we have an interview. Preston's going to interview Jonathan Goodwin, which will be his first going interview. Going to be there? Or is oh, it yeah. Be... Oh, wow. yeah. Really? He's there. So, And he's going to be talking about his career. Um, he can't talk about the AGT accident, but he will obviously talking, be talking about his life post the accident because, yeah. you know, he's now paralyzed from the waist down. So is wheelchair bound. And if you follow him at all on Instagram or Twitter, he's unbelievably inspiring. His attitude, the way he is, you know, this man who was, you know, a, an incredible escapologist, sort of re slightly reinvented the art, really, and has now had that potentially taken away from him. But, oh, my God, he's amazing. So he's going to be giving his first live interview. I, I said in the podcast the other day, I said that... Um he will become more successful after the accident than he was before oh just God. because he's wired that way. Yeah. He will, there's a million things that he'll do. He's not the sort of person just sit there and do nothing and feel sorry for himself. He will, he will reinvent he's himself. He's non-stop. He's, yeah. he's really remarkable. Um, in fact, I'm seeing him tomorrow. So oh, yeah. it'll be my first time actually seeing him. We've been FaceTiming a lot. Um, so that's that. 
So, I mean, you know, plus we should say, I know you are one of the dealers who's coming. Thank you for your support. But and I don't normally do dealer stands, but I, I you know, I, I thought, yeah. why not give it a go? Yeah. But <laughs> since we found those photos on your hard drive, you've had yeah, no well, choice. It's become very difficult yeah. to say no. Yes, it's become difficult to say no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, it's the really... only paid interview Craig's done. <laughs> <laughs> I <didn't mention. laughs> it's, it's one hell of a dealer's hall. You know, oh, yeah. I think there are, if you, they're all listed on the website, but it's like 20 dealers, international dealers, um, you know, brilliant British dealers, people coming over. Uh, I think one guy's come from China. One guy's coming from a couple of guys from Hungary. I mean, but really that, we love a dealer's hall. Love a dealer's hall. Well, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. and I'll tell you 100 percent the honest truth. The only negative I had for last year is because the dealers were in the same room. It felt a bit cramped because the chair, Absolutely. it felt a bit cramped and it was kind of a bit difficult to see yeah. Uh, yeah. what was happening at the dealers. So the fact that you've moved them into another room uh, is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it's a big old room too. It's a proper, I mean, again, for a one day event, it's ambitious, but like it is a big proper dealers hall it's so exciting um, honestly mark you know the only thing that'll be frustrating for us is we won't really get to enjoy the day because we'll be running backwards and yeah. forth to the theater and doing that don't that last don't time. argue with me <laughs> <laughs> ow, ow. sorry go on craig that's okay it's okay yeah that's okay. i like your parents i'm stuff. crying <laughs> You're looking for oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for something I can do. I'm looking, normally there'll, there'll be a sort of um I don't know what there'd be a joke bandage or something around. There's so many jokes in this room. Something. What I was gonna say was um what I was gonna say was uh last year we thought we wouldn't have time to look around and we actually did and we yeah, had that's good true. chats with people and like it was a good um it was a good uh it was a more relaxed day than we thought, but we'll see. Yeah, in less than two months' time, we'll find. There's also, I should say, if we're just now without questions, just talking about different aspects of the convention. There were great goodie bags last year, and that was another thing that was like, it would have been very easy not to do goodie bags because we had a million other things to do. But I, there's nothing more exciting than a goodie bag, and yeah. the goodie bag last year we had um, goodies from Cartamundi slash Bicycle. Uh, Murphy's. Merlin's, Murphy's, uh, One Ahead, uh, Visual Magic Store. I'm trying to think we had a few other bits and bobs in there, but we had loads of great goodies. And it was, I think, last year... The value, it, it, the value, the value of the was, goodie bag was, was about, about over 40 ticket, quid, 45 yeah. quid. And I think, fingers crossed, it will be the same this year. There'll be a pretty decent goodie bag that will be the value of about half the ticket. I, again, well, because the day, it's £65 for the day. And the goodie bag will be worth, I would think, at, at least 35, 40 pounds. So it's a pretty good goodie bag. <laughs> the other thing to say as well, um, and we put this theory on 11 last year too, so. Twitter. Oh, yeah, theory. 11. And this year. We put this on Twitter and Instagram and I think on the Facebook as well, a magic week. But it's worth just stating this now for any of your watchers. Um, we are totally aware that this has been a shit couple of years for people especially in show business but for whatever reason and at the moment a very frightening time in terms of uh, energy bills price hikes cost of living crisis it's a very real thing that is affecting millions and millions of people yeah. so we're we are aware that there are people who would love to come to the convention, but just can't, can't afford it. Money. Because if you choose it, literally some people will be choosing between, can we afford to put the heating on? Can we afford to do the shopping? Can we afford? So there's no way, it's, you know, some people who are watching will be able to afford 65 quid to go, you know, and have a nice day. So we have, um, we decided that we would give away some tickets for the convention called mitzvah tickets m-i-t-z-v-a-h uh which is uh which is a hebrew word a yiddish word and um for anybody who wants to come and truly cannot afford it just email us if you would put the link up to this just email info at londonmagicconvention.co.uk and in the subject put the word mitzvah m-i-t-z-v-a-h we'll give you a free ticket and there's no questions, there's no shame, 
There's it's no completely confidential. Completely, you don't have to yeah. prove yourself. At Nothing. All, right? You don't have to even give us a reason. Yeah, yeah. Just say, um, I'd love to come, or just send us an email. We need your full name. And you know, and if it's you want to come and bring your wife or your kid, you want two tickets, just say two, please. It's fine. We trust, you know, this has been out there for about a week or so. It's not been abused by people. No. We've had a nice group of people have asked, you know, 30, 40 tickets or something. It's not like we've been div- deluged. So honestly, if you want to come, you can't afford it. Just email us. You can come. Because also, Craig, it's about, you know, our close up competitions in memory. It's the Anthony Owen trophy. He killed himself a few years ago. He was, you know, I was his best man. I was one of his closest friends. And there are people, I'm not saying the cost of living crisis is going to make you suicidal, but it's hard. It's a massive impact on people's mental health, on their well being, on their state of mind, on what their family feels like, how they can operate. And we love magic and we love the fun of it. And we just want you to know. It's a family, yeah. and just cu- have a laugh. Just take that a we day rather out. Of that. Have a, this is another thing about it not being. I mean, even if we sold out, it's not really a money making exercise anyway. But we would rather have it full of people that are just happy to be there, and you know, and have it a nice atmosphere and a nice, friendly, kind day than than not. You, then you let's know, go we, away and think. Look how much money we made. Yeah, we'd rather just. Just put back, back in. People. It's given. Back in. It yeah, gives yeah. us so much joy, magic, yeah. that yeah. and gave Anthony so much joy and gives all of us so much joy that we just want. You know, we just think we got to put back in. You just want people to know, and also just people to know that that they might be having a shit time now. It'll, you'll get through it, and if we can help in any tiny way, then we. Yeah, we yeah, it's, have a nice day. it's a joy for us to do that. You guys are amazing. Just need to let you know that. Seriously, that is that Thanks. is amazing. That is so great. Because nobody has asked you to do that. No one's told you to do that. And it's not like you're making a big fuss of it and you're going, hey, look at what we've done. No. It's just something that you've mentioned, you've dropped out a couple of times. Seriously, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely Thanks. brilliant. I have to ask one more thing, though. Last year, we had a very special VIP. Uh, in that Darren uh, oh, yes. did the Q&A on stage. One of the things that uh, I loved about Ron's Day, but Millen's, was they always had a special guest uh, or they had a surprise surprise guest or something to the, to, throughout the day. Is that something you're going to be uh, rolling with again this year? Not, not I, really, to be honest. Uh, Maybe no. in the future, but yeah. this year we haven't. Uh, I, that's a bad answer, I suppose. But honest I, think, I think because... Um, Last year, it was more born out of it was the day after Darren had finished his tour. And I think it was like he was going to be there if he could. But if there were travel things or if he was just wiped or whatever, we didn't want to announce it and then disappoint people. Yes. So this year, that Q&A slot is good win. And I think we were just we're just honest, if, if you'd not have announced Goodwin and you've said, oh, we're going to have a special guest. He would have been a massive special guest. So, yeah, I can see that that's, yeah, that's right. the thing. Yeah. It, you know, I think we are. Uh, we didn't want to hide the fact that that Goodwin will be being interviewed, but I think in the future it is something that we. Uh, yeah, maybe be, it is an exciting thing to have, you know, secret exciting person, you know, and who knows, maybe that will be, you know, what the Patrick Page Award becomes is that it's yeah. somebody that becomes an exciting surprise, regardless of sort of uh, that interview section. I think we, there are surprises planned throughout the day. Um, that aren't necessarily people, but sort of events or things or whatever. And that will always, because again, that's something we love is sort of yeah. um, not puzzles, but, you know, surprises. No, and sort of just like that. Adventures. Yeah. So, so I think that, that it will be a day full of, um, I had a video when I was about three called a, a day of songs and surprises. I think it was called, <laughs> so it's impossible not to say it will be a day of songs and surprises, but it will be a day of that reminds tricks me. and surprises. I had another idea that I want to talk to you okay, about. Right, yeah. right. Um, Yes. You know what I'm loving about this? I'm loving that you guys are already talking about future conventions. I don't oh, want to oh, yeah. 100%. So glad. You need to build this into a brand. This genuinely, I know uh, that it's not about making money for you guys, but this could be one of the top conventions in the UK. Uh, definitely feels We'd love it to. But we'd love it to be. Here's the other thing to say though, and this is this is true. It is about the people who come. Yeah. And also, but that's the same with the competition and 
the four pound gala show if nobody enters you know it's not very good so that's not to say we have had entries for this year but there are spaces and if you are watching this and think well i'm not good enough to do just just leap in especially the four pound gala show i can get having the fear about doing a close-up competition but leap in and have a go you know one of the absolute stone cold hits of the gala show last year was a brilliant young lad who did a a a, a simple rope routine flawlessly and finished within the time slot and he brought the roof in you know but he's on the same bill as leo manor who also entered the thing that's what's so brilliant about it it was crazy (laughs) and i think leo didn't win but that kid actually won (laughs) in fact he said to me leo anyone who was there last year like this leo manor said to me i I bumped into him recently and he said i'm going to come back this year and i'm going to finish the trick that i started last year he did four Um, four minutes of 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 setups and no reveals Uh, unintentionally he ran out time <laughs> but also with the close-up <laughs> competition have a go yeah somebody is going to win london close-up magic champion again it was ed hilson last year there were eight entries last year your act has to be between eight and ten minutes long it doesn't matter if you're not an amazing technician or if you are a brilliant magician and just want to have the experience of it is so friendly. It will be nerve wracking. I'd be lying yeah. if I said it's not. You'll be out on that amazing stage. There'll be, you know, cameras shooting it so we can all see it. But have a go. And, and, and it's a, it's a, a just theatrical close up to music is the, the ability Do to whatever you want. Whatever you want. Do whatever you as want. As long as it's close up. In the future, I think we'll have more competitions. We'll probably have a stage competition in the future or a comedy or, you know, we'll do, do different. At some point in the future, it might expand to a two day convention. Maybe. Never Maybe. say never, I suppose. You know, but again, at the moment, uh, uh, some of that is, you know, we in our heads, yeah, we talk about it and go, well, well when it's a two day convention. Yeah. But suddenly you're, you're looking at fortunes that we have to spend, just yeah. me and Preston. And for just me and Preston, read just me. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think you have to know that the that the audience is there, and what last year and this year have really proved is that the audience is there. Oh yeah, you, you know, so so it gives us confidence in the future to expand it. But you only get that confidence from the more people that turn up and the yeah. more successful the day is. The only other thing, just before we move away from the close up thing, I was thinking about this recently with the competition. Like with any of that stuff, the only you can enter and not win or you can enter and win but the only way that you can guarantee not winning is by not entering that yeah. stuff it's the only it's like the only surefire way that you're not gonna get that title is if you don't enter whereas if you do enter you might you don't know you know you, you at least have a chance yeah. um and also there are plenty of people over the years that you know you win it on your third go yeah yeah it's just the experience of doing it and it is from the bottom of our hearts a fun supportive room that we completely encourage we're not into sitting at the back giggling about the acts it's that's not this convention it's not about it's not about cool cliques and being snotty you know it's about just having just the family of it and the fun of it and we all screw up tricks and we all have tricks that hit well and no, not you. Apart from you, I meant apart from you. Thank you. Um, Thank yeah. You. Anyway, so that's it. <laughs> that's great. That's so wonderful. I cannot wait for. Uh, I, 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 I genuinely, out of every convention that's gone on this year, this is the one I'm most excited for. I cannot wait. I cannot that's wait. so lovely. Thanks. It's going to be. It's going to well, be amazing. Thanks for your support as well. Yeah, thank for, you. We really appreciate it. You know, it really it means a lot, Craig. It's lovely. And people can get tickets by going yeah. to londonmagicconvention.co.uk mm-hmm. and uh, you just click buy tickets there. Yeah. You choose your seats. Yeah, but it goes through the Lyric, which is a proper lovely theatre there website. So you have complete freedom of what your seat is in the venue. It's great. Oh, perfect. But, you know, it's selling. You know, it, it's not it's not going to sell out this year. But that you know, it's a six hundred seat theatre. It you know, yeah. we it won't. But you know, it's definitely now we've doubled the number of people who were here last who came last year. So we're and delighted. Some, yeah. So now it's just about 
the more the merrier. Just come and uh, and just have fun. Just have a laugh with us. That's great. I well, I'll be there, and I encourage anybody who's listening this to come as well. I know it's going to be amazing, and congratulations on continuing to organise this. I can only imagine how hard work it is organising a convention like this and how stressful it is and like you say how much of a risk that you have to take so yeah. you know you didn't have to step up and do this you're both busy you're both very busy successful people that have got a million things on and yet you found the time to to do this and I you know on behalf of the magic community thank you really appreciate it oh, uh, thanks, thank you mate. no problem so I'm gonna uh yeah so guys leave a comment down below uh, let Preston and Andy know uh, if you came here last year, if you came to the first one, let us know in the in the comments down below. If you're coming to the second one, if it's going to be your first year, let us know and go and book tickets. You can go and go and and remember, I'm going to put the email address at the bottom as well. If you uh, want uh, support, like Andy said, and like ticket. Said, yeah, drop an email and uh, and 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 you know, obviously that can be arranged. Yeah, but guys, I know you've got a million things to do. I know you're going to be going to the Lyric today. You're looking at toilets randomly, so that's fun. I was joking, <laughs> but now, oh, you've, right. said, okay, good. now good. you've said toilets, I really do need a wee. <laughs> and don't forget, if you are once you bought your ticket on the website, it shows you if you want to join the competition. Uh, if you want to join the gala show, just send an email from the website. Let us know. We'll put you on the list. And we'll brilliant. see you there. Absolutely brilliant. Guys, make sure you book the tickets. Like like the guy, like Andy and Preston said, go and enter the four pound gala show. I'm gonna be there. So come and say me when you say hello to me when you're there. And uh, Preston, Andy, one more time. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm.